Hello my quilting family. Today we're going to show you how to draw your own foundation paper piece templates. What you're going to need for this is graph paper with quarter inch lines going this way and this way, vertically and horizontally. You're going to need a ruler, straight edge, something, you know, for for what you're going to, to do. Now I would draw my templates in pencil because it I, with a good eraser but i when we did that the last time you guys said you couldn't see it so we're going to use a pen we're going to use a pen today just to make sure that this is all you can see what's going on if you're going to make a design that's larger than your eight and a half by 14 you're going to have to tape them together and matching up your lines with tape and if you're going to make multiple paper pieced items the same size, you might want to have some freezer paper handy that will stick to your cotton when you iron it. So, and this is really handy coming in, into this. But first, we're going to show you how to draw your templates. So, come on here. We'll give you, we'll, we'll show you what we're doing. Okay, let's start with some basic blocks. A basic block, like a four patch, let's say you were doing mini four patches. So I'm just gonna draw out a quick four patch here. There we go. You wouldn't be able, oops, hang on, hang on. Let me get this. You wouldn't be able to do this as a foundation paper piece by doing this right? Because you have to have these two sewn together and these two sewn together before you can sew this line. So this creates a separation. So if, we're re if we were going to do a foundation paper piece four patch design, it would look like this. Let me just finish this up. There we go. And, oops, that's what it would look like. So you'd, you'd number your one, two, three, four. And then once you're finished putting all those pa those fabrics onto that piece of paper, then you could stitch them together and they would create a four patch. But now the other thing that, that when you're drawing these small items, well, nobody would do a like a foundation paper piece four patch unless it was like incredibly small so the another thing that this is useful for let's say you wanted to make the kite block and let's just draw out the square I'm just making it two inches finished and a kite goes from here to here and it goes to the point hang on Now, so basically you're working with a finished block size that you need and then you would put in things like your seam allowance, right? Like you would draw around your seam allowance like so. Now there's your, quite, your kite block, very quick, very quick to draw. And that you would la label like one and then two and three. Now it doesn't matter which one is two and which one is three, right? But one has to go down first or should go down first because it's the largest piece and you want the, the bulk from the seams distributed across the block, right? Now, let's say you're doing something a little more complicated like flying geese. Uh, I'm just gonna draw this over here. Okay, so we want the flying geese to uh, finish at two inches by seven inches, let's say. Okay, so there's our, our two inches by seven inches. Now the rule on flying geese is usually, the traditional rule is a one to two ratio, right? So you're two inches across, so each flying goose then would be one inch and it would go from the center point out to the points down like this, right? Well, when you're drawing your own, you don't have to follow any rules now, right? 
It's, you don't have to follow any of these rules. So let's say you want a traditional flying goose up here, and but you want to make the middle ones very different sizes or varying sizes. You could very quickly uh, just you know draw something like this and have it paper pieced. There's nothing saying you have to follow the rules, right? Because it's yours and there's no quilt police. Now, another useful thing that people find for um, drawing your own, like you would also make your seam allowances around the outside at a quarter inch, right? So you know your fabric now has to be large enough to do this, right? Okay, so let's try something a little different here. Hang on. We'll go seven. We'll do a seven inch square. Hang on. And there we go. Ooh, I'm running out of paper. Okay, so we're going to do a seven inch square. And this is where um, this is where people had fun when they did uh, they wanted to do uh, like crazy quilts, but they want all the blocks the same size. So you would put a random number one in here and you would just draw one, right? And then two would go here. Like you would just start drawing your twos, you know? And then three would go come here and down across. Four would come to here, or four would come right across to here. This is four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Very simple, very quick. And you're not following, you're not following any line. You're not following any line. You're just, you're just making it how you want to draw it. Now, of course, again, you would put something like this with a quarter inch seam allowance on around the outside and then you would start playing. This is where the freezer paper comes in. You would take that number one piece and just make sure it would be large enough to cover one then iron it on to your freezer paper, to your freezer paper, right? To the freezer paper, and then start doing the next ones. Actually, I'm just going to show you right here. I'm just going to oh, freezer paper without. Hang on, I'll just rip off a piece here. I'll just rip off a piece like so. It's fine. I've got 75 feet of it. I'm sure I'll have a lot. There's a shiny side to um, freezer paper. That's the side you want to iron to. That's the side you want your fabric to be ironed to. And there's a dull side, a papery side. And this, oh, wrong, I'll pick up this again. This is where you would start drawing your number one. You would just trace it. You can just trace what you had done, right? One and then two would be here, right? So now you just trace this. So as you sew this, you bend this out of the way, right? And you sew along where the bend is, right? Like you would actually fold this out of the way between uh, unit one and two so that it would, you know, then now you're sewing right with your needle right up against that paper and it would be fine. So, that's what I've got for, for this. I hope you try this method and try some of your own blocks. This has always been fun. So, hi, okay, so our next video in this series about foundation paper piecing. Now that you know how to draw your own, basically it's all up to you. We'll show you how to sew these and how to create little blocks. I'll, I'll do the little kite and the flying my my flying goose and a crazy patchwork and we'll show you how to sew them and we'll also show you the the freezer paper method as well because i think that one would help out quite a bit so 
hope to see you next week. Okay, bye. If you have questions about what you saw in this video or you have ideas for content or something you want to see us do, please put those comments in the description below. But also, while you're there, like, share, and subscribe with your friends. That would really help us out. Okay, I want to thank you and have a great day.